unlock and scale accelerating future partnerships that's brought to you by the Economic Times, powered by Dell Technologies and Ingram Micro India. Well, partnerships are actually partnerships personified. They are a living, breathing entity that don't just sustain by themselves, which is why it is imperative to continually invest in them. Dell Technologies believes in unlocking the key potential of its channel ecosystem to drive that joint success. Well, you're here since you too believe that harnessing the strengths of, other, of others from different corners of your ecosystem is one of the most strategic ways for businesses to scale innovation and solve some of the most complex challenges. So ladies and gentlemen, let's just stay ahead of the curve with integrated sessions on the end-to-end -end products and services, all supported by Dell Technologies from client to infrastructure, from edge to the cloud, and understand the Dell Tech Partner programs. And just to make this uh, even more experiential, we will also have our celebrity guest, the OG of fielding, I must say, John T. Rhodes, who would also be joining us in some time from now to share life stories on the power of long-term partnerships and collaboration for joint success. Well, for now, ladies and gentlemen, let's just find the joint growth opportunities since Dell Technologies wants to transform how it works with its channel partners, especially at a time when it is all about winning and winning a lot faster with a much better partner experience, I must say. Well, to give us an overview of CSG, which is Client Solutions Group portfolio, allow me to invite on screen someone who has a demonstrated history of working in the IT and services industry. Ladies and gentlemen, let's usher in some happy cheer to welcome on screen Joseph Satyan, the Field Marketing Manager, Client Solutions Group from Dell Technologies. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, team, once again, for giving me this opportunity to talk about uh, Dell's client portfolio. The reason global disruptions in the last two years have catapulted us to a world of change. Now, work is no longer tied to a location, right? As flexible work locations increase, so does your potential to attract and retain and inspire employees from all around the world, right? While a hybrid and digital first mindset will set you apart, you need to ensure that you are equipped with the intelligent devices and modern IT solutions that will enable flexibility and spark innovation you know, within any company. Right? Now, wherever this productivity is going to happen, your users will need the best and most efficient, most secure technology that will make their lives easier, allow them to connect and collaborate and do their best, best work at all times. Now, the need for dynamism and workplace agility is now needed more than ever. The stride of change will continue to be fast-paced, making sure that we are not only prepared for what is happening right now, we also should be prepared for what is going to happen in the future. Now, rather than focusing on providing the products for where you're working, right? now the focus becomes more on providing solutions and experiences to fit the kind of work that you will be doing whether you're still working from home or you're still, you know, you're coming back to site or you're still in that hybrid mode of between working in office and home. So Dell Technologies can provide the right solution to make the work experience seamless so that you can be most productive at all times. Now, our client portfolio is built basically around two major tenets. First is the intelligent PCs. We offer the world's most intelligent PCs which provides our customers with a competitive edge when it comes to productivity, right? Now, having a PC that works, that, that makes your everyday work easier uh, versus a one-size-fits-all PC, right? You can imagine the, the, the amount of difference or the, the obvious advantage to be having a personalized experience will improve your performance. Dell Optimizer uses AI and machine learning 
to recognize the patterns as well as the user's performance and preferences to enhance the system's overall performance, right? We offer this software at no additional cost across our commercial portfolio. As we continue to invest in and expand our intelligent computing experience, we will continue to offer updates to this Dell Optimizer program to all our customers free of charge via Dell.com. The second tenet of our commercial portfolio is the security piece, right? Uh, there are multiple features that we can leverage. For example, Dell Safe BIOS mitigates the risk of BIOS and firmware related tampering with integrated firmware attack detection. Safe BIOS uses a secure cloud environment to compare an individual BIOS with the firmware image against uh, the official measurements held in the cloud. In addition to this, we have Dell Safe Data and Dell Safe Guard and Response to prevent and detect and respond to uh, advanced malware and cyber attacks. Now, coming to the Dell portfolio, right? Only Dell has the breadth of the entire portfolio to meet the needs of everyday work style, and only Dell can do this end to end with our solutions. Now, I'll quickly run through our entire portfolio. First is the Optiplex portfolio. Uh, our Optiplex portfolio is the most intelligent PCs with built-in AI in the, in the form of Dell Optimizer on the Optiplex 5000 series and 7000 series, which, has, which gives us a great competitive edge to deliver the most intelligent PCs to our customers. The world's most intelligent PCs are now more intuitive than ever, like I explained before, in the form of Dell Optimizer's Express Response, which analyzes how the users work with their preferred applications to boost their performance. Multiple applications can now be optimized at once for a great personalized performance and enhanced user experience. In addition to this, we have an intelligent audio which delivers audio and mic enhancements for your collaborative applications, right? And uh, in addition to this, we have Express Connect, which provides faster data and video download through the world's first simultaneous multi-network connection, which is part of the Dell Optimizer portfolio. Now, in terms of a performance and expandability, our next-gen Optiplex is supercharged with 12th generation Intel up to core i9 processors featuring the new hybrid core technology to balance the workload between the cores so users can multitask with ease. Now, powered by this Intel's Alder Lake you know, performance processors, the new Optiplex family delivers serious productivity gains with built-in features that include the all-new DDR5 memory, the third M.2 SSD hard drives, we have three standard uh, display ports for 7000 series. We have the additional capabilities of the Wi Fi 6C, and it can support up to four displays as well. Now, the new Optiplex portfolio comes with a variety of mounting options to ensure the users are having a clutter free environment at, and to improve their productivity as well. So these are the these are some of the you know Optiplex mount options we have ranging from the all-in-one stand wherein you can mount the Optiplex behind the monitor and also have some height adjustability features. We also have the DVD enclosure format, and in addition to that, we have something called as a dual visa mount wherein you can mount an Optiplex to a height adjustable arm as well. Now moving on to the latitude portfolio. We have a comprehensive mobile portfolio to align the customer's needs and work styles. We have Latitude laptops and two-in-ones as well, uh, including the Precision Mobility portfolio, which we will talk about in the coming slides as well. Now, the 3000 series is the, uh, the essential business class series. It has got all the business class features that you need, but is it, it's not going to have the power and options of the 5000 series, which is uh, where I'm coming to is all about the 5000 series, is all about choice. It has better quality than the 3000. It has the most feature rich, scalable and powerful uh, performance features. Uh, you have all the choices in 5000 series ranging from the 13 inch to the 15 inch. And uh, as we move ahead with the series, the 7000 series is all about light and small with 
broader range of premium features you know for larger deployments in in organizations 9000 series is our ultra premium portfolio it has the best innovation in commercial pcs the best user experience and smallest footprint and the longest battery life with all these features you will be able to work whenever and however you need with small and light stylish laptops and two in ones designed specifically for mobility and productivity you can stay connected with industry's fastest wireless and lte options intelligent collaboration and privacy features with a broad array of ports and accessories to set up your office anywhere now moving on to the performance portfolio right dell delivers the performance optimized products that can help you get your job done faster and be more productive at the same time now bring all your visions to life with dell precision workstation uh with award winning accessories of course that will immerse you and your audience to work now why should we consider dell precision portfolio is because we provide the award winning industrial designs with the smallest yet more powerful mobile workstations rack workstations and small form factor workstations on earth right our systems provide revolutionary thermals ensuring the better performance longer productivity and peace of mind no matter how hard and your you and your precision systems are working you in addition to this we have outstanding front of screen performance experience with 4k and hdr resolution along with infinite edge displays as well in some of our mobile precision portfolio dell optimizer for precision specifically includes application improvement battery performance improvement connectivity express sign in audio optimization and most of all the analytics which will give you a complete report of your system utilization and where you can improve in terms of your system performance as well so dell has the best workstation portfolio in the world we have completed successfully our 25th year in launching the dell precision and continue to innovate and help our customers as well precision is leading in all the industries that matter including media and entertainment engineering and design engineering and design are all about 80% of our market and precision is a clear leader in that space uh, these industries are transforming rapidly right now and uh, precision is a clear leader among them right and with newer technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality for visualization uh, ai being deployed to you know make workflows more seamless new user interfaces using you know touch voice and gestures uh, these are the new uh, you know ways of working in in these particular industries precision as a portfolio is investing a lot in these ground breaking innovations and leading from the forefront so when it comes to vr and ar precision has a broad array of uh, you know configurations uh, to support the ready for vr systems including you know desktops mobile form factors towers and rack workstations when it comes to ai more precision workstations are becoming ai ready every year and this year as well we have launched several pre configured data science workstations that are available for our customers so 7000 again is the performance portfolio that is uh, part of our precision with uh, 7920 tower workstations 7920 tower workstations and in 7920 rack portfolio we have the most scalable and highest performing rack workstation as well now coming to the mobile workstation platform the 7750 is the world's most powerful mobile with built in ai responsiveness and we also have a 15 inch workstation as well in addition to this in our current es portfolio we have launched a 14 inch mobile precision as well in our entry level 3000 series and our performance 5000 series as well so when it comes to the tower portfolio we have again have the 5000 mainstream scalable for performance workstations which is designed to impress uh, it which is including the 5820 tower workstation and moving on to the essential series we have the 3000 series tower workstation and we do have a 3930 rack workstation as well now remote working while it's here to stay with 94% of the surveyed organizations are planning to increase their long distance virtual meetings as opposed to your in person meetings in the next 24 months 67% of those organizations have said that they are making remote arrangements for their employees in the long run 
So the companies have to focus on making sure that they are supporting their employees in their new environment with the right technology and hardware to maintain productivity wherever they work. You can boost your employees productivity by up to 42% when you set up the corporate work desk with a 34 inch QHD curved monitor with Dell Display Manager software, which is free of cost, a keyboard and a mouse combined with their work laptop. This is why I wanted to talk about the Dell commercial monitors portfolio. Dell offers a comprehensive portfolio to suit every customer needs, right from the size all the way from a 17 inch square monitor to a large 86 inch conferencing monitor. In terms of resolution, we were the first to market the 8K monitors, right? And uh, in terms of color, our, sh our range of ultra sharp monitors offer a wide color coverage for accurate color reproduction and our premier color monitors are designed for color professionals working on color critical and uh, tactical tasks. When it comes to design, we have ultra thin narrow bezel monitors. Uh, the new models feature a smaller footprint to accommodate the shrinking workspace. A wide range of Dell monitors are adjustable as well. Uh, for example, your height adjustable, tilt and swivel and pivot features. Now, UltraSharp monitors gives you the best innovation, performance and design that you need. We also have large format displays which, and including our conference room monitors as well uh, for your collaborative workload. I wanted to talk about a specific product portfolio that we have launched this year, which is our portable monitors, uh, which will give you dual screen productivity anywhere that you go. In particular, the C1422H uh, series monitor. This is an FHD monitor, which will be really helpful for external sales folks who are doing uh, you know, one-to-one -one pitches with your customers wherever they go they will have a dual monitor productivity wherein they can present whatever content that they want to in front of their customers. So now this has a power pass through convenience wherein you can connect uh, your laptop and your portable monitor with a single type C USB cable, which will deliver your power audio and video together in a single cable. So moving on to other Dell client peripherals. So these Dell client peripherals will help you work faster and smarter, enabling you to be more productive at all times. You can connect and collaborate more effectively and efficiently, whether you're working remotely or at office. When it comes to the design, uh, the Dell client peripherals are stylish, innovative, and functional. These accessories are designed with unique features, which are built in to make your life easier. And accessories that, that will also help maximize your productivity. It perfectly complements your Dell PCs. It, designed, it is designed and tested and certified to work seamlessly together with Dell systems with the help of Dell Peripheral Manager, which is a software wherein you can organize all your uh, client peripherals. It can also conveniently work with other OEM products as well. Now, our broad range of portfolio includes UltraSharp webcams, which is the latest entry in our client peripherals portfolio. This will give you the best image with 4K quality, right? And it also includes a large CMOS sensor, which will give you a better video output combined with AI auto framing as well. And you can collaborate seamlessly with the Dell Premier wireless ANC headset offers you active noise cancellation and smart sensors that will automatically mute and unmute your calls. This combined with your Dell Premier rechargeable wireless mouse will give you a better productivity in terms of connectivity up to three devices via your dongle, your Bluetooth, and it will give you a full day battery life with as much as two minute recharge. In addition to this, we have our dual monitor stand, which is MDS-19, which will maximize your productivity and uh, your desk space and keeping it clutter free with impressive cable management as well. And this combined with our Dell Premier backpack offers you the option to go through a security checkpoints without removing your laptop. It has a EVA foam cushioning and durable outer skin, which is made out of ocean bound plastics, which is a recyclable material as part of our sustainability. And you can also go with our Dell mobile adapter, which is DA310, which offers you a wide range of ports 
and the 90 watt power pass through as well. So I wanted to talk about a certain product which we have launched this year, which is the dual charge docking station HD 22Q. This particular product, in addition to offering a wide range of ports and <clears throat> this particular product, in addition to offering a wide range of ports, also offers a, a wireless charging stand for all your smartphone devices. That's it from my side. Back to introduce my colleague, Suresh, who's going to take you through the server portfolio. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you very much, Joseph, for sharing how Dell's dynamic products and solutions are here to empower our hybrid work lifestyles. And ladies and gentlemen, I think it would be uh, really nice if you'd also given your feedback for the session and you could check the feedback section at the menu bar right there. And uh, on that note, uh, here's a little question for all of you. Do you know what is really our superpower? Well, it is the power to create connections. It is the power to create those bonds. So let's exercise our superpower by collaborating. As we say, we stay collaborative as we work across teams within organization and also outside. Well, on that note, uh, moving on, ladies and gentlemen, you would agree that uh, the demand for IT infrastructure solutions, how it has really opened that plethora of opportunities for the channel partners. It is important to base our upcoming session on server portfolio, the infrastructure solutions group that Dell Technologies operates through. Well, to give us an overview, we would like to welcome on screen now Suresh Govindachari, the senior systems consultant from Dell Technologies. Suresh, uh, having said that, it's over to you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking time off and being here with us today. Uh, today, I'll take you through our SNS PowerEdge uh, server portfolio. Um, but before I get into overview of the servers that we have as a part of our SNS offering, I thought it would be worthwhile just to focus a little bit on what are the business and IT challenges that most businesses face today. And these challenges are quite unprecedented. Uh, just to name a few, I think one of the things that companies are facing is unpredictable growth. And this is something we can all relate to, especially coming out of the pandemic, right? Uh, some of our consumption patterns have changed enormously. For example, who would have thought all of us would be buying tons of sanitizers for our home use? Who would have thought that a family of four would actually end up needing four laptops because everyone has a need to be online? And just our consumption pattern has changed. Uh, the businesses behind this have seen unpredictable growth. Some of them have seen extreme demand and some of them have seen extreme slowness. And this has impacted obviously from an IT side uh, at the back end, uh, they, it causes a lot of challenges with respect to over-provisioning and under-provisioning of the IT infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I think businesses, all businesses have to do with less people to deliver more. Uh, they have CAPEX budget constraints, which means uh, when you have those kind of constraints, when you're looking at refreshing your IT hardware, when you're looking at uh, tech refresh cycles, you begin to wonder, do I have enough budget to do it now or should I postpone it later? And what would be the impact of this on the business? These are some of the challenges that customers are facing on an ongoing basis. And uh, to kind of drill down further, the CFO, the CTO, the CXO, they struggle with often uh, conflicting demands on, on their roles. Uh, for example, the companies are expected to drive revenue, drive innovation, yet at the same time, keep the cost down. Uh, companies are expected to be agile, super quick, uh, ability to change with the market, yet from an IT perspective, ensure everything is done in a safe and secure manner. So these challenges do sit heavily on, on the company CFOs and uh, from an IT perspective, if I were to kind of quickly step back and see how the customer views his landscape, right? Uh, I think at a, at a very high level, all, all, all companies look at applications as what drives value for them. 
application is what drives innovation application is what drives revenue and these applications could be traditional applications like erp uh, which tend to sit on prem or it could be the new age applications which are often born on the public cloud but it really doesn't matter whether it sits on the cloud or whether it sits on on prem the underlying infrastructure that drives these applications the nuts and bolts of the infrastructure the servers the storage and the networking is what drives these application what brings value to the applications to the business and within the infrastructure piece in some sense the server is the brains behind the infrastructure it is what gives you uh, gives you the innovation what drives data now if you were to look at the it landscape from the customer point of view uh, from the company point of view what drives value what drives revenue for them are the applications and these applications could be traditional applications like erp which tend to typically sit on prem or it could be the new age applications uh, born on the cloud but no matter where these applications sit uh, what drives them are, is the underlying infrastructure and the nuts and bolts of this infrastructure are the servers storage and networking and within the infrastructure the server becomes the core building blocks because it's the brain that actually drives the other components of the infrastructure now with that as the base now let's look at uh, why a server uh, can give competitive advantages to the customer now at a very fundamental level the server is expected to do three things well one drive traditional and emerging workloads in the most efficient and effective manner two do all this in a comprehensive and enduring secure fashion right so that all the it processes is done all the it data all the processes all the workloads the hardware software and the systems are completely secure both from internal and external threats three do both of these things in the most cost efficient manner if the server is able to do these things well then it gives a competitive advantage to the customer now with that as the base we believe that at dell we have our servers designed that addresses these three key elements and if i were to kind of explain why and how which takes me to the next slide all our power edge server portfolio is built around three pillars uh, the three pillars being adaptive computing autonomous computing and proactive resilience now when we're talking about adapting uh, adaptive computing here we're talking about our servers being engineered to optimize the latest technology advances for predictable and profitable outcomes uh, we have the widest range of servers which means depending on your workload you get the right choice to fit the server that will deliver the workload in the most efficient and effective manner on the second piece when we're talking about autonomous uh, compute infrastructure here we're talking about our intelligent systems that work together and independently thus enabling rapid digital transformation and productivity especially in a in a situation where people are expected to drive more by using less human resources automating your compute automating your infrastructure goes a long way in addressing this the third piece is around proactive resilience uh, here the system software are designed for secure interactions and the capability to anticipate potential threats uh, all our servers are designed uh, to have end to end security built in grounds up now with that as the base let me kind of elaborate on a couple of these uh, points right one is when we're talking about uh, autonomous infrastructure this is delivered to you uh, with the help of two things one is the idrac an idrac is basically the brains behind the automation features that is built into the power edge server it's agent free and it's an embedded server management it basically gives you remote control of the server on its operations working alongside that is the open manage the open manage is a standards based management system now 
it helps you uh, control the complete lifecycle management of the uh, server seamlessly, right from deployment, deployment of OS, deployment, uh, configuration, uh, managing the inventory of the server, and so on and so forth. Then it takes care of the updates. Whatever updates you need to do, you can pre-schedule it. Updates with respect to BIOS, with respect to firmware, with respect to drivers. Then going forward, it helps you monitor the health of your ecosystem. It gives you the appropriate alerts, gives you uh, the right level, uh, the health of the system, what is the performance, what is the power consumed, so on and so forth. Last but not the least, it helps you maintain the servers. When you have to reprovision, when you have to remediate, when you have to replace the parts. So the entire life cycle of the server can be managed seamlessly with the help of IDRAC and open managed system. On the third pillar, which is the cyber resilient architecture, this ensures uh, all our servers have the built in security that enables business to grow and thrive in a very secure manner. Uh, our servers adhere to the NIST security, cybersecurity guidelines, and uh, it ensures the security starts at the silicon root of trust, right? And it goes through all the phases, right from at the first level, it protects, it protects the server during every aspect of the life cycle, including BIOS, firmware, data, and physical hardware. In case uh, there is a potential attack, it has the ability to detect malicious cyber attacks and any approved changes engages the IT administrator proactively. And in, in a rare case where uh, there is a breach, it helps quickly recover the BIOS, the firmware and the operating system back to its original good state, ensuring you get the security back in place. With these, um, Understanding of these three pillars in place. Now I'll take you through the SNS portfolio. All these servers are built around the three pillars that I discussed. With respect to SNS servers, uh, we have the full range of servers. All of them have pre-configured configurations, but if, if customers need to upgrade, you do have the option to buy upgrades to kind of expand on the servers that you have. Now, this is a server that all of you would be familiar with. This is our entry level server, uh, the first server to a, to a company or a customer, if I may say so. Now the T40, very dependable, very efficient server uh, designed for general business purposes. Uh, this server uh, has been uh, the number one selling server for several quarters in a row. Uh, this actually succeeded the earlier one, which was the T30, uh, at a very quick level. Uh, what are the quick differences? One, the T40 gives you 50% increase on data storage. Uh, it is smaller. It's about 23% smaller than the earlier model. Uh, third, it is 25% faster data speeds, and it has the fa faster CPU, giving you more than 27% um, faster turbo speed. Now, if you're looking for a, if there is a customer who's looking to expand more, then the next option for him on the tower side would be the T440. The T440 is a dual socket server. And in terms of targeted workloads, this would adequately cover mail, messaging, file, print, workgroup, collaboration, uh, web serving as well. Ideal server for mid sized businesses, a bit of analytics and intelligence. Now the T440 comes with two variants on the SNS uh, portfolio. It has a bronze version and the silver version. It also has the option of adding RPS if the customer needs so. So this is an excellent choice for small offices, home offices, remote branch offices, and can also accommodate some of the data center needs, right? So these are the two uh, tower offerings. Let me go quickly on to the rack offering. Uh, the entry level rack offering is the R240. It's a single socket entry level rack server that is designed for businesses looking for enterprise class features at prices that they can afford. Uh, in, in the R240, very quickly, some of the key capabilities, it can take up to four hard drive, three and a half inch. It can take up to four DIMM slots, 
So adequately uh, capable for workloads like web server, hosting, file print, collaboration, and uh, mail messaging. And as I move forward uh, on the rack, uh, we start with the two socket um, rack. This is the R450. In terms of R450, just uh, before I get into the details of uh, R450, on the rack portfolio, we have uh, the good, better, best offerings, right? The good offerings being on the R440, the better offerings being on the R550, and the best offerings being on the R650 and 750, right? So customer has uh, the choice based on the workload that he wants to deliver. Now, on R550, on R450, uh, it's a highly density optimized one U, extremely affordable. It's a perfect choice for small businesses needing a dependable platform that can grow with his business needs, his or her business needs. Uh, very good for uh, light virtual uh, machine density. And uh, it occupies a very, very small uh, footprint, right? Uh, for general purpose scale out, it's a great fit as an entry level rack offer. Now R450 comes in with the latest Intel processor. It comes in two variants, uh, silver and gold, right? Let me go on to the next slide, uh, which is R550. The R550 is a versatile two U, two socket platform. Uh, it's designed for data center needing an affordable virtualization ready racks. Uh, the R550 comes in three variants. Uh, you have silver uh, 12 core, you have gold 12 core, and you have gold 24 core. And this, uh, I think from a target market perspective, it's a great fit for small and medium businesses, um, applications like video streaming and surveillance, where uh, quite a bit of storage, uh, quite a bit of storage capacity is a requirement. A great fit for web tech and service providers as well. Now, moving forward, what you'll see from now on are the set of new servers that we've introduced recently, right? We start with the R650XS. Now, the R650XS is a one new server. Uh, it combines the right set of enterprise features, uh, right set of performance and scalability to drive application performance for then scale out data center computing, right? One of the things I just want to highlight, uh, it, has, it comes with multi-vector cooling. Uh, when we talk about multi-vector cooling, it is basically, uh, it cools the hot components within the server in a much more efficient manner. The fans direct the air to the hottest spot as opposed to generally covering the whole surface area. Uh, what this translates to, it translates to better cooling efficiency, and it also means lesser power bills to the customer. And the R650XS, it's kind of purpose built for fast growing scale out solutions uh, in an optimal uh, output, in an optimal footprint, right? Now, let me move on to the next one, which is the R750XS. Now, R750XS is a dual socket to you, uh, full performance enterprise server designed to offer the latest performance in a similar footprint as the existing infrastructure. This once again comes with multi-vector cooling. Uh, it's designed for growing scale out solutions and it comes with industry leading manageability and security solutions, right? And here, if it is uh, ideally targeted at traditional IT looking for cost optimized technologies, uh, it's looking for, for example, uh, workload like uh, VDI, where you do not need, you do not need graphic accelerator support. R750XS is great for VDI instances where accelerator support is not required. As I move on to the last um, slide, which is on the R750, uh, this is something all of you would be familiar with. This is our workhorse server, right? Uh, it's fully featured enterprise class server. It delivers outstanding performance for the most demanding workloads. Uh, when you're looking for um, VDI with balanced core count and GPU to support, 
for maximum number of end users, R750 would be the perfect fit. If you're looking for AI and ML applications, this would be your go-to server. If you're looking for mixed workload standardization, this would be your go-to server. So typical markets would be enterprise customers, financial institution, higher learning institution, so on and so forth. Now, I'm gonna kind of summarize what we've quickly discussed. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the details. Uh, these are available with our distributors. You can reach out to them for more details. Uh, but at a high level, on the tower side, very quickly, we have the T40 and the T440, single socket and dual socket options. On the rack, we have a full-fledged portfolio, starting with a single socket 1U of R240. Moving up first the chain in terms of good, better, best, you start with R440, which is a 1U one socket server, then moving on to R550, which comes in three variants. Um, and then on top of it, we've added the new servers, which I briefly spoke about, which is the XS portfolio consisting of R650 XS and 750 XS. And finally, capping up with uh, the R750. Uh, the R750 is GPU enabled and a perfect fit of, for all mainstream workloads. Now, that pretty much covers what I had to share with you. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, we do have additional upgrades when customer wants to upgrade, maybe add a, a additional RAM, additional processors, additional hard disk. There is a, a set of options that is clearly defined for SNS and you can, you can use them to upgrade based on your customer need. And the other point that I want to kind of very briefly touch upon on the new models, which is the XS and the 750, the warranty has been increased. The base warranty for these servers in SNS is a minimum of five years. Now with that, I, I come to the end of, my, end of my talk. Thank you for your time. Uh, what next? Uh, it would be great if you can get your sales force, get more familiar with our products, more familiar with the PowerEdge portfolio. If they can get certified, uh, you'll have a uh, trained sales force who can then take the benefits of the PowerEdge servers to the customers. Uh, with that, I'll hand it, hand it over back to you. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Suresh. Uh, thank you for sharing how Dell Technologies is uh, really the best partner out there to help enterprises stay agile and also resilient with its storage infra support. Well, if you like the session and you would want to render your feedback, ladies and gentlemen, please hit the menu bar right out there. You can submit your feedback for the session. Ladies and gentlemen, today, as soon as I landed in the city of joy, the air hostess said, thank you for choosing us as your travel partner. Hearing the word partner, I just smiled uh, to myself thinking, wow, that's really contextual, right? Since I was going to e-meet all of you. But you know what, having said that word, the hostess did definitely make the passengers who were ready to deplane feel very inclusive. Let's dive into a fireside chat that gets really cracking about the future of partnerships and the importance of collaboration, all real life examples. Let's take on the call, this renaissance of a man. The man of the moment, a former international cricketer, current coach, commentator, and I must say, a traveler for life. Well, feeling, ladies and gentlemen, you would agree that uh, it is one of the important three aspects of cricket that was not given as much importance as batting or bowling until this very man showed up. He leapt like a salmon and stopped singles by reputation alone. Well, voted as Wisdom's Cricketers of the Year, an all-rounder on and off the field, he is at the forefront of the sporting.com revolution. One amongst the top 100 South Africans, and we are absolutely not surprised at all. Well, we will extract more perspectives as we check the game plan with him. For now, do you know which spot did John T. Rhodes, who's going to be our very special guest today, represent for South Africa before cricket? Now, I'm going to give you only 10 seconds to decide amongst tennis. Is it rugby or is it hockey or football? Well, the right answer is hockey. This was just a warm up question to get your minds on the move before we welcome on screen our legit legendary guest, the one who wears hats 
more than we could count. Ladies and gentlemen, with all the good energies and all the good wishes, let's welcome Jonti Rose on the screen. Jonti, so excited to be seeing you. A very, very warm welcome. Hello. So good to be greeting the effervescent you. Shikad, everybody. So good to be here. Even though it's online, it would be amazing to be physically present, but very grateful for the fact that with technology and innovation, we certainly can be together, even though it is remote. So nice to see you, Shikha, and everybody, a very warm welcome from my side. Although in Sweden, it's not so warm. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> so I, I think our audience resonate uh, the same vibes, John T, and they're equally happy seeing you on the screen. And digital, like I said, when I welcomed everybody today, that it makes us feel very inclusive. So. On that note, I hope you're all good to go into the conversation mode. A hundred percent. All right. Johnny, I'm going to ask you straight up, which according to you has been the greatest partnership in your cricketing career and why? Well, it is interesting because cricket in a team environment, it, it always is it's such a fascinating game because even though it's a team, it still requires the individual to stand out and do their job. Almost, you know, know your role in the team and do your job. It's as basic and as simple as that. And, and not everybody gets it right, obviously. Otherwise, it'd be, you know, it'd be difficult to have a world champion because every team would be unmatched on their day. But it's a, a scenario where from a, a partnership where I've been exposed to the management and, and the leadership which guided the South African team between a period of 1995 and 1999, where we were without winning a World Cup, we were ranked the number one team on the ICC rankings for that period. And, and that partnership that I specifically talk about was the leadership of the coach, Bob Wilmer, and the captain, Hansi Cronier. And, and there's, a, there's a number of reasons why I say this was the most successful partnership because you know there's, there's certain aspects that are or characteristics of partnerships that are relevant on the sports field and in the corporate environment. And is it okay if I go through a few of them with you? Absolutely, absolutely, Jonti, you could. I think the first and most, the first and foremost, the most important characteristic with regards to a partnership especially in a cricket environment, because you think about it, you know, you, you're on top one day, you're down the next, whereas in a business environment, you'll often have goals that are quarterly or in a year. So, you know, that sort of feedback is not as constant as a cricketing perspective, because every time you look at the scoreboard, you are getting feedback at the end of every day's play, whether it be a five-day test or a one-day game or limited overs, you're getting a result. And sometimes the outcomes aren't exactly what you want. So the most important quality, I think, in a good partnership is having trust, because there was never a case of, you know, of, of either Hansi or Bob Wilmer as the coach and the captain, um, you know, that really is your leadership, and, and, and the buck stopped with them. They, they, never, they never ever felt that, oh, well, you know, Hansi is, uh, Bob never felt Hansi is he's not taking the responsibility, he's laying the blame on me. He is, uh, or, or Hansi on the other side, thinking, oh, Bob's just saying, you know, I've done my work once the game start, starts. It's the captain's role and the captain's job to, to bring the team together or produce the results. The two of them as leadership and as manage, management really trusted each other. In, and and that, that filtered down to the rest of the squad. So such an important aspect was this trust because it, it then meant that the rest of us in the team felt that and also believed that there was trust and not that it's a secure environment from a point of view where you guaranteed to play for South Africa, but you knew that you had the backing, you know, captain and, and, and coach, if they backed you as a player, regardless of the results against you or the negative results, you trusted the fact that they believed in you and then you could play to the best of your ability more often than not. So, so that trust was, was really important. I think the second characteristic that they displayed, and not always, and, and that's the beauty of a team, Shikar, is that everybody has different abilities and, and quite unique in that. And, and Bob more so in that there was this constant sharing of knowledge. And for a partnership to be successful, 
We need to share knowledge because we have all different perspectives. And like I said, that is the beauty of a team. I mean, imagine having 11 John T. Rhodeses. You know, we'd be very busy in the field. We'd be very loud, but, you know, maybe we could scamper a few runs. But when it came to opening the batting or bowling, we would be terrible. So that unique ability that each person brings to the side or brings to the, the management, the partnership is important. And, and I think one thing that Bob and, and Hansi did really well was a constant sharing of knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, it's one thing we talk about good communication, but communication is not just one way. It's not just like me telling people what to do. Communication is also about the ability to listen. And that's where that partnership where Bob was like an encyclopedia around cricket. I mean, he really was incredible. So as a batter in the team, if I was struggling, he wouldn't say, John T, this is the way you have to do it. He would give you options saying, why don't you try this? Or John T, you're more of a hockey player. You know, instead of trying to hit the ball over extra cover with good, you know, good hands and good elbow, because I'm so wristy from my hockey, why don't you reverse sweep the ball for six? You know, so this sort of communication um, and this sharing of knowledge, Bob never kept it to himself. You know, I've, I've heard of, of, of um, sort of old maybe in the 70s where one English batter had picked up the googly of a certain Australian leg spin bowler mm -hmm. and he never shared that information with the team. He was successful but was not prepared to share the knowledge because he felt they must work it out for themselves. You know, so that, that constant sharing of knowledge was so important to our success. And again, Hansi never felt as, as a good partnership that listening um, receiving the, the knowledge is just as important as imparting it. So those are you know, two aspects that I think are, are so important. And, and the reason why we were successful in that era was that you know, we had that the trust and we had the sharing of knowledge. But I think a, a thing that we as a South African team were slightly different was that we were trying to be innovative. And innovation, let's, let's face it, I mean, the world is constantly changing. So innovation, and you can either turn your back on change, you can accept it and embrace it. But when you embrace change, you're just keeping up with the opposition. Like all of us tried to do at the 1996 Cricket World Cup, when Sri Lanka sent out Sanath Jaisuria and Ramesh Kalubuturana to whack the ball everywhere. You know, all of us were trying to find a pinch hitter. So Sri Lankans were innovative. They changed the way that cricket was played. So we as a South African team went, okay, we have to be innovative. And Bob was already using the laptop for you know, analysis of the opposition, analysis of our own performance. Mm -hmm. And it was a case of going, okay, so how can we use and not just embrace technology, but be, you know, be the initiators and innovate, allowing technology to enhance our game. And it went to a stage where, Bob Wilmer in the 1999 Cricket World Cup, in the first game against India, our first match of that World Cup, we were playing at the Hove in Brighton. And it was a case of Bob had been watching football, American football on television. And he'd seen the coaches with these, you know, big headphones and speakers talking to other coaches in the stands, um, players on the field. And Bob said to Hansi, if I give you a communication device, similar to what, kind of what you're, we're wearing now, but it's way smaller, it looked like a hearing aid and it was sort of skin tone, you couldn't see it. If you have this on you in person, I can then send you information. And it's not, a, again, it's not about you have to do this. It's just giving you a, a broader perspective and an understanding of what's happening on the field. Because sometimes when you are a leader at the coalface, you don't always make every decision with the bigger picture in mind. So Hansi put it in his ear, but because we didn't want to break the rules, we went back to the rules of cricket, which were written in 1820. And there's nothing there, obviously, about you know, electronic communication devices. So we felt like we weren't breaking the cricket, the laws of cricket, but Hansi put a strip of plaster over his ear. He didn't want to make it too obvious. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, Alan Donald at the time was somebody who loved gadgets. So he wanted the other device. It came in a set of two. So Alan popped it in his ear. Not, he, didn't need, he really didn't need it, but he wanted the gadget. So when he came to bowl the first over, he took off his cap, he took off his sweater, and he dug in his ear and he took out the hearing device. And the poor umpire went, oh, what is this in your ear? And Hansi by then had come over and said, you know, it's something that, that Bob Wilmer has discussed. We, we've thought about it and we would like 
is it okay if we use it? And the two umpires on the day got hold of Mr. Clive Lloyd, who was the match referee on their communication devices, which was two-way walkie-talkie. And Clive and said, Mr. Lloyd Hunty, the South African team have a communication device on the field. Is it okay? Can we continue? And Clive Lloyd went through that same 1820 rule book and said, guys, you're not breaking the laws, but it's, it's not in the spirit of the game because nobody else has one. And that for us was, you know, a team being innovative. So that's the whole point. They haven't got one. They haven't thought about it. You know, don't stop us from using it. And he, he really felt that it's not the spirit of the game. So that innovation, so fortunately, a ball hadn't been bowled. So we couldn't be accused of cheating later. It was stopped and nipped in the bud from the outset. But it was just us trying to be innovative. Mm -hmm. And often we, you know, so it, in, in a partnership, innovation is really, really important. And, and, and often we think innovation is is doing something that nobody's ever done before, discovering something that's never been ever, you know, utilized. But sometimes it's just doing what you're doing in a slightly different manner. I mean, Kalu and, and Sanath went out, they were innovative. They didn't now use a hockey stick. They were still using cricket bats and playing cricket, but really aggressively. So that innovation, again, very important part. And then the last thing I think for me was that the importance in, in, a, in a collaboration is just in a partnership is you collaborate with everybody com contributing to where you want to go forward. So we never felt as a team under this partnership of, of Bob Wilmer and Hansi Cronier that we were being instructed what to do. I mean, I have a father who's a school principal. I grew up with him. You know, we've been told what to do and, and Kepler vessels. And if you, if you misbehave, you get a, you get a lashing from the school principal, my dad. Um, and Kepler vessels in 1992 as, as our World Cup captain he was very traditional, old school leadership style. Not only would he tell you what to do it, but he would tell you how to do it. And under Hansi and Bob Wilmer, with this incredible partnership, we were never instructed. We as a team got together. Sure, the, the captain, he had to make the final decision, but we were never instructed what to do. We all were given the opportunity to decide what are the goals? What do we want to achieve? What is the style of cricket that we want to play? And how can we contribute towards that in our own unique way. So it was, it literally was a collaboration on the cricket front where you were never told you have to do it. This is what we're going to do. And even worse, this is how you're going to do it. We were all, you know, really given that space to use the unique skills that we had to play to the best of our ability. So those four elements, I think, from a partnership that Bob Wilmer and Hansi Cronier had filtered down into the team and made us, without winning a World Cup, I'll repeat that. I know it always comes up somewhere, but to be the number one side, limited overs cricket between 1995 and 1999. So, so I think, uh, Jaunty, um, you're an amazing storyteller and the way you sort of uh, describe these incidents, these stories, uh, sharing with us really, uh, you know, uh, real life examples of the tenets of uh, collaboration, partnership, and I I'm sure it feels very relatable to everybody who's watching you right now. But Jaunty, here's the thing, there have been also instances where as a team, on that particular day, the team, say, finally could not make it, example, the 1999 or the 2015 World Cup semifinals. Have you ever felt uh, disappointed also in a partnership or felt like uh, there was something missing, else you could have done uh, better personally? Well, that is interesting, Shikha, because, you know, obviously from a personal point of view, 2015, I wasn't at that World Cup, but in 1999, I was right amongst it. You know, I was in the middle order batting, we were chasing a fairly low score that South Africa had set us in the semi-final. And if anyone, that, that 1999 World Cup, a lot of it was about Lance Klusner. You know, he was an exceptional all-rounder. He certainly was somebody that had gone out and taken that entire tournament by storm. In fact, he, he, just, he, he was the player of the tournament without us winning the tournament. That doesn't often happen that somebody that's not in the final is then bestowed the, the sort of the title of player of the tournament. And, and the interesting thing was that it, it was probably the closest that South Africa has ever been to a World Cup final yes. because we weren't even defeated by Australia. You know, we tied the game one more run would have made a massive difference. So, difference. so we would have mean wasn't guaranteed that we were going to beat Pakistan in the final, but it certainly would have given us our first World Cup final and taken a lot of the pressure off about South Africa and there being chokers. But in that partnership, you know, everybody talks about 
Lance Klusner and Alan Donald. We needed one more run and Donald and Klusner were involved with a, a mix up in a run out and it meant that Australia went through. And for a, a long time, the criticism was on Alan Donald because he didn't run. Lance Klusner made the single and, and I just, you know, as, as a batting, as a senior batter in the team, my job and my role, I understood it. You know, I got to 40 odd and I didn't finish the game. So in that partnership, when, when we had defeats, we first and foremost, we, and we were encouraged to do it, was, was that, that, and again, it came from the trust, it came from the open communication, was that we were encouraged to be honest. And I, if, if I had to be honest, it was my job and I was seen as a finisher. You know, I have a pretty good record as a finisher for South Africa. And in a World Cup semi-final, that is my job. In a bilateral series, that is my job. I can't leave it to Alan Donald, who's there to, to bowl as fast, the white lightning, he was called, and, and, and knock people over. So I think in the disappointments, we were always encouraged to, first and foremost, look at the role that we had in, in, in the team. And, you know, where was our responsibility? We never, ever passed the buck. So, yes, there was disappointment collectively. But as individuals, it was never a case of saying it was because of this or that reason. And again, that stemmed from Hansi's example as a captain. He never once criticized an area saying, oh, we didn't score enough runs in the first 10 overs. But you and now Gary Kirsten and Herschel Gibbs trying to survive against Brett Lee, who's bowling really quickly. And if you hear Hansi's comments, you think, well, keep us, Hansi. We were trying to survive and then score. So that trust that filtered through allowed you to be honest about your own performance. So yes, partnerships are not always going to achieve those results, but it's, you, you can't afford to get into a case of blaming or, or finger pointing until you've had an honest, you know, sure, we need the retrospect. We need to find out because if you just keep doing something, well, it's, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you expect different results or different outcomes, but you're doing the same thing, then yes, you have to look at it. It is, is the process incorrect? Because we were never we were never focused on the outcome. Because that's things you can't guarantee. But you had to be honest and say, okay, so if the process is if the outcomes are not what we're getting consistently, what is the process? Do we then need to change the process? And sometimes that's man. I mean, it's actual man um, manpower. You know, people in in your organization, or it's a case of we've decided something the way to do it, and it's not quite right. So let's change that process. But very. Very important that first and foremost, you are honest with yourself in your in your appraisal of your performance. Love what you just said, John D. And what I also understand is the, the thing about partnership and collaboration is, like you said, is really trust your team or your partner's judgment, sometimes maybe more than your own. And you have to give that confidence that uh, I have your back. Now, that brings me on to uh, my next question to you, John D., which is that, uh, like they say, there's no better approach uh, to solving challenges than the famous saying that two heads are really better than one. We would really be uh, very excited to know about the corporate partnerships with organizations, with brands you've worked with. And is there anything special that you'd want to share with us about that? Yeah, Shika, you know, I, I retired from cricket in 2003. I'd obviously, I had a Bachelor of Commerce degree because growing up in South Africa during the apartheid era, there, there were, and rightly so, there were economic and sporting sanctions imposed on South Africa. So, so we had no country to play for up until the India, India invited South Africa to tour in September, October 1991. I was about to write my exam, so I didn't even come on. I wasn't a part of the team. There was a couple of extra players who they had invited to come along. But I got straight into that World Cup in 1992, still studying my final year at university. So I had a degree. And when I retired from cricket in 2003, I started working for Standard Bank in South Africa, firstly as a business banker. So I trained as an account executive, I'm trying to now say, well, I've got this commercial degree, so let me use it. And then fortunately for me, and not saying, you know, no disrespect to the, to the banking environment, the financial sector, because I've spent an amazing time with Standard Bank, but we launched Pro 20 Cricket. Now, cricket and banking, you kind of think, well, who's we? Cricket South Africa or is it the bank? It was actually the bank. But the important thing that we at the bank, we, I mean, we had a marketing team that Cricket South Africa had one or two people running marketing around cricket, but they were the cricketing board. So we came up with this concept of Pro 20 and it involved dancers on the side, it involved um, fireworks, it involved helmets you know mining helmets because we were now promoting this fast and furious 
brand of cricket, the ball's going to be flying out. So we had this marketing team of 15 people, but we then said to Cricket South Africa, this is your product. Mm -hmm. Allow us to work together. We'll, you know, it is your game at your stadiums, anything from a cricketing point of view, whatever the rules are, you design and develop that. But from a marketing perspective, mm -hmm. we have this team and that is keen to go and eager to go with these great ideas. And suddenly cricket became sexy if I can say, and, and, and T20 cricket was launched in South Africa amongst this, you know, fireworks and razzmatazz and dazzle and, and it, it just grew and it, you know, it took a while before the first 2007, the inaugural cricket T20 World Cup was hosted in South Africa because the ICC saw us having this successful product, but the collaboration, that partnership was, we weren't cricket people, but wow, we could market, you know, and, and cricket South Africa, they didn't have the marketing team but they were the cricket people. So that collaboration, and we're not laying claim to IPL, and, but if you think about T20 cricket, without that first 2007 World Cup, which India managed to win, despite the fact that some of the senior players said, no, thank you, it's not real cricket. Dhoni came with a fairly inexperienced and young team, and suddenly, you know, the IPL was launched the next, the following year, and T20 cricket has certainly taken the world by storm. So we're not laying claim to it, but we're just saying that that partnership with Cricket South Africa and the bank of all things certainly provided a really entertaining brand of cricket that we all love today. Yeah, I think that's a very emphatic example. And wow, I mean, and uh, John D, I love the word we, how, how in every statement, every sentence that you utter, uh, there's always this power of we, and that's what precisely we're talking about, the power of collaboration. Now, very quickly, before we actually jump into the rapid fire round, which is a surprise round for you, John T, I I have, um, you know, the, my last two questions for you. Uh, do you see a difference between partnerships in sports and those in business? Because we just talked about the business aspect of it also so do you think they play out differently as the stakes are not really the same or do you find the parallels as well that's an interesting take and uh, now I'm gonna ask you uh, Jaunty uh, this may sound like a little bit of a personal question but but what is what's been really uh, apart from cricket if we were to ask you what is the most priceless part